So questions? Mm -hmm. I have a question sure. about uh, the, the talk that you did uh, last Wednesday. So it's not the subject, so maybe I do it at the end of the, this no, talk or like now? No, do it now while we're fresh, that's all right. <laughs> now? Yeah. Okay. I think it was a very necessary talk that you did uh, nowadays. Because I have been in um, in Buddhist communities for 25 years, and um, so I have passed many many experiences around. And sometimes the people who comes into a, a Buddhist community, um, we think that we are in the Chambresi land, and the teachers are Buddhas, are the uh, friends are Bodhisattvas, and. and and this is just an illusion. And when they realized it's an illusion, it's, so uh, I think a Buddhist community is a, is a sansara community, as any other organization. That's right. So uh, I think one of the things that we have in the moment to fix it is the the inferiority role that, that women have in religious, in any religious organization. And Buddhism is a religious organization, obviously. So, um, so uh, uh, last, last day, or last week, or so last month, uh, came out a lot of problems with uh, teachers, high teachers, that ha had uh, bad sexual misconduct. Uh, and many, many of my friends get uh, completely shocked. For example, in Sambala tradition with the Sakyon, here in the FPNT tradition. So, I ask myself, why does it happen that? And I found uh, an answer that I said, well, it's the inferiority role that the women have. We are uh, in, in the courses, we are a majority uh, working, we are the majority, but the top levels, they are male, they are men, no? They are. So, uh, in many, many centers that have been, women, yeah, help the team. Women go to the kitchen, prepare the tea, and have the tea. And men they are sitting because they are very high lamas or very high in the in the centers because normally many many men manage, manage the center. So uh, I I I knew an organization Sakyadita. Do you know Sakyadita? Of course, yeah. So I think uh, we need uh, to work in this direction. And it's our responsibility, is the women who are uh, in Buddhism, yeah. who consider we are Buddhist, yeah. Buddhist, who have to work in the direction of empower women, uh, empower women. Mm. Because uh, it's, uh, I think it's because uh, we have to fix to fix something that is uh, unfair, and uh, I think that's prevent this misconduction uh, from men. Mm. You know, but because if the if the women have the tea, the following step is you are a sexual object. So uh, empower empowering women. Uh, we prevent all these things. So uh, I became very inspired about it. And I get in touch with Sakyalita and I want to work for Sakyalita. So I want to create a Sakyalita group in Madrid. So what do you think? Uh, what advice could you give us? Good, do that. <laughs> no, I don't mean to oversimplify. It's. Um, it's, it's so important that we talk about current events within a Buddhist context, like climate change, like racism, like homophobia, like sexism, um, because these are our everyday experiences, and if we separate them from Dharma, we're missing the point of Dharma, aren't we? So all of these subjects, we need to figure out how do they apply in a Dharma context. And 
what is different from talking about these social issues or these environmental issues here in a spiritual setting as opposed to like a purely academic or purely activist setting? You know, what, what can we actually bring to the activist community or bring to the academic community that is unique? And the first thing is working on anger. Because we know that um, we're used to using anger to find our voice, but anger actually doesn't help people hear us. And so when we're in, say, take for example, the talk that um, you're mentioning was on feminism and Buddhism. When we're talking about feminism within a Buddhist context, we have to start with, okay, so we're, we're seeing there's a problem. Yeah, it's good to see that there's a problem, that women are treated um, as second-class citizens everywhere, including Dharma centers. And women themselves perpetuate that habit by usually being like, oh, I'll get the tea. You know, it's actually, you know, these good, kind men at Dharma centers aren't saying, darling, you should get the tea. They're not. These are good men, right? They're coming to Dharma centers. We're the ones saying, oh, I'll do it. And men, you know, I'm guessing, are kind of like, well, you guys are better at it, so you guys just do it, yeah? I'm guessing, I don't know. Or like, you're used to doing it, why don't you guys do it? It's not out of some, like, plot, like some misogynistic plot to, like, disempower us. It's just we're used to it functioning that way, yeah? So if we can start by kind of remembering the historical context and the cultural context of all of us as individuals, and then say, okay, but it is a problem that women are always doing this lesser work and men are always doing this higher work and that in classrooms men have a stronger voice even though they're a smaller percentage. You know, that's a problem and we need to work on it. If we start with what is the context so that we can diffuse anger. Yeah, because we need to not speak from anger. We need to speak to each other like brothers and sisters who really love each other adult brothers and sisters, not children brothers and sisters, and say, um, of course, it's totally normal that normally the women do all of this, um, but today, boys, can you do it? And then they're like, ah, I don't know how. And you're like, well, chop this and put it there. You know, and be nice about it, because they don't do it all the time. You know, it's new to them, right? Because their mothers and their wives have been doing it for them. It doesn't mean they're off the hook, but it means we need to be kind when we ask, not like, oh, I've been doing this for 40 years, you do it! You know, you say, I've been doing this for 40 years, could you do it? My brother, who I love and respect, can we share and collaborate? Can we listen to each other? So, what Dharma communities can bring to this conversation is start with love, start with compassion, even before that, start with looking at our own anger, and then speak really directly, really clearly, assertively, but it's not then from anger. And then when people, if they react badly, we're less likely to get defensive and argue. We'll say, of course you're going to have that response, that's a normal historical response. Of course people are going to be upset whenever you change the status quo. Of course, it's normal. So then your anger doesn't get flared up by other people's resistance. You have strength to be patient. You say, okay, it's going to take time. You know, we're looking at the altar, it's only men on the altar. So of course we're used to thinking men are the teachers. Even if we don't verbalize it, it just gets into our subconscious, doesn't it? And so then you're like, oh, who's this girl? Oh, I have to knock her down, Peg. I've had this happen many times, right? Um, where uh, I'll be in a Dharma class and there might be some very traditional macho guy who sees me sitting here and goes, who is this girl? I will knock her down a few pegs. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and it's not kind and they shouldn't do it, but I understand why. They're surprised. I look like their granddaughter. Why would they listen to me? But if I was uh, the same age and the same education, but a man, they would think, oh, what a precocious, bright young man, right? So I can't start with anger. It's not going to help. I have to start with, of course you would have that reaction. I don't like that reaction. I'm going to address that reaction. But of course you have it. And you're not bad for having it. It makes sense given your context. You know, same with racism, same with homophobia, same with discussing issues around climate and environment, that if we are ready to over-identify with our ideals and over-identify with our politics, 
then when those ideals and politics are challenged, it feels like we are being challenged, which is a symptom of grasping at inherent existence. Right? Mm -hmm. So when we're breaking this wheel, again and again, we have to ask, who am I anyway? Right? We've been in all of these realms, which means we've been in all of these roles, in all of these genders, in all of these forms, from beginning this time. Who is anyone anyway? And harm is something that we want to stop. And people might not know that they're being harmful unless we tell them. You know, so it's that delicate dance of not using the Dharma to jump over social issues. It's really easy to do. People do this a lot. Right? You know this uh, concept, spiritual bypassing? You know this one? Which is basically using the Dharma to escape reality. Yeah, so like for example, you say, oh, I've got cancer. And someone says, oh, it's just your karma. It's like the wrong thing to say, right? But then, right? And it's like, well, it is your karma. Remember compassion? Well, it is your karma. There are other things to discuss. To say, oh my gosh, you have cancer? I'm so sorry. You know, to start with that. And then, what can we do about it externally? What can we do about it internally? Etc., etc. So spiritual bypassing is like a type of spiritual laziness, which is jumping over the present reality in order to get to the profound point. And this happens a lot with politics and dharma coming together, where people say, oh, you know, like say climate change, for example, oh, right, well, anyway, it's the degenerate age. The world's going to blow up anyway. Ah, anyway, just relax, right? You know. It's still like recycle stuff, okay? Yeah. It might be pointless, it might all end in flames, but it's good for your mental habits to develop a habit of caring. Whatever the conclusion is, whatever the long-term result is, it's good for your mind to be in the habit of caring and to be in the habit of acknowledging interdependence. So what does that look like for me in this form today, in this culture? I will do the physical activities of that, even though they aren't really the point. It's good for our minds to develop a habit of equality and thinking of everyone as equal and has an equal right to respect, whether we're a man or a woman or an adult or a child or whatever, right? It's just a good habit for the mind to actively seek ways to find equality. We want to stay out of the God realm, right? Because when you are holding yourself up as the highest, you're also all alone and isolated. Which is why sometimes um, a very traditional, stereotypical, macho man that we all have somewhere in our family um, is so angry and so aggressive when confronted with feminist ideas. Because it's challenging their place of power, it's challenging their identity, and they're scared. And the way they're showing the fear is through anger. So don't make them more scared, they're not going to listen to you. You know, you have to start with, I love you, Grandpa, or whoever. I love you, stop pinching my butt. I love you, stop pinching my butt. <laughs> Thank you, good night. Right? Like, you still get to say the true thing. But if you're starting with love, they might actually hear you. Right? So, slowly, slowly, but we need to have this conversation, and uh, women need to have it with women, men need to have it with men, and men need to have it with women together. You know, we have to really talk about this, and um, also I think it's important to try not to scare our brothers with our newfound feminism. Yeah? Because then they can start tiptoeing and not wanting to be bad and not wanting to do the wrong thing, but also like, I don't even know what the right thing is, ah. <laughs> you know? We have to not scare them, right? Be like, tell us what it's like for you to hear all of this Me Too conversation. Tell us what it's like for you to realize some of your behaviors have been really a, not the right thing, but you're a good person. But to finally realize that, like, tell us, because you are our brothers, and we love you, and we trust you to be able to change, just like we trust ourselves to be able to change. Mm. You know, it's, it's hard, but like, we have to do this. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So I don't know if that helps, but to realize that all of these things are symptoms of samsara, and it's easy to either get obsessed with fixing samsara, which is not possible, or to say, samsara is not fixable, therefore I don't try. Mm. Those are the two directions we go, isn't it? Mm. We say, oh, all these social issues, that's eh, samsara. Mm. Yeah, we like to dissociate. 
Yeah, or say it doesn't matter, or you're not being profound enough. Yeah. Or to say it's the only thing that matters. Stop meditating, save the planet. Right? There's a middle way. And there's a way of bringing these things together to enrich each other. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, Sakyadita is good. Um, and we need to you know, bring men into the conversation. And we need to bring Tibetans into the conversation. Because Tibetan culture has helped Buddhism so beautifully. And we're so grateful that it's been preserved. You know, and that the texts have been preserved, and the learnings and the traditions have been preserved. You know, we have so much admiration and respect for Tibetan culture, and recognize that it's very misogynistic, patriarchal, hierarchical, and it's no longer relevant. Maybe it never was, but certainly isn't now. You know, so holding those two things. And I think it's good to also have just very practical things to offer, not just say, here's the problem, here's the problem, but to say, for example, here, this maybe could be better done this way. Just something really concrete, different, you know? Um, and, you know, and you amongst yourselves see what you've found has been a problem, and talk about it, and just very small changes, but even just very small changes change the tone and the atmosphere of the place. Um, just being able to have a conversation, like with a sense of humor, you know, that we're all ridiculous sentient beings obsessed with our identity, which is an illusion, and offend each other all the time. You know, women offend other women all the time. It's not like men are the only ones that offend us, right? We offend each other constantly. Probably more, right? You know, men offend each other all the time and they get all macho and need to defend themselves or like humiliate or whatever. Dynamics, right? So if we're just kind of acknowledging that we are ridiculous creatures full of delusions, let's be nice to each other. But one of the bravest ways to be kind is to directly address misbehavior. And the Dharma is so powerful because we are differentiating behaviors from people. And so in these issues of sexual misconduct, you can say, this person still has the potential to become a Buddha, and this behavior is harmful and needs to stop. So then we're not throwing people away for making mistakes, but we're also not letting them get away with mistakes. I, I don't know about you guys, but if, if in your families you've ever had situations of abuse, it's so hard for families to talk about someone who's abusive in any way, because you divide the family into those that believe he's abusive or she's abusive, and so he must be cast, cast out. And those who think, but he's a good person, therefore he can't have done these things. To acknowledge these things means we have to cast him out. So we can't. You know, they can't see that someone can be, I don't know, a good family man and a good provider and a good kind whatever, whatever, and also have done these bad things. You know, people like to oversimplify. So if you've had these experiences in your family where it just splits a family apart, it breaks your heart. So in the case of these lamas who do these behaviors, we need to just very consistently say, we understand that the monastic system with the modern world has made things a lot more complicated. And we understand why if you've been born into this system, especially if you're like a reincarnated Lama who's been put into the monastic system as a child, it could start to feel like prison. And then you don't know how to interact with the other gender, and so your interactions are completely outrageous. Because you just never learned how to play with girls when you were a little boy, you know? They just never learned. And so it's absolutely unacceptable what a lot of these Lamas have done. Absolutely unacceptable. And also understandable. You know? And so to say, okay, your learning and your education has been amazing. You're a charismatic and wonderful teacher. We want you to be able to continue to do that, but you can't if you keep doing this. You know, it's a more nuanced conversation, isn't it? We want to just say, you are bad, go. Yeah. It's too simplistic. We all do the wrong thing sometimes. Um, we need to be able to create enough safety for these llamas to admit their bad behavior. And it's only going to be safe for them to admit it if they don't feel like we're going to throw them away. You know? Have you ever done the wrong thing? And known it was the wrong thing? And then that dance in your head of 
distraction and disassociation and justification that you have to do in order to keep doing the wrong thing. And then if someone catches you, the defenses that flare up and you have to pretend that they're crazy, you know? But if someone says, I love you and I see you doing this, it's much easier for you to say, you got me, you're right, I am, I'm sorry, I'll stop. Mm -hmm. But if they're coming at you with a wave of anger, all you're going to do is say, no, 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 you're crazy, that's not happening, you're crazy. Yeah. So we have to look at how we talk about it too. Thoughts? Arguments? It's all samsara talk, we might as well. <laughs> of course, uh, we should try to change things. She's not talking about not changing things, or not trying to change things, but she finds useful for her not to prevent anger from arising, to remind herself that she has been born as a woman in this society because she also created the karma for, that, for, for the good and the bad things. The, the advantages of being a woman in this society, not, not being, for example, in Africa or wherever, but also the disadvantages of being a woman. Mm -hmm. So, and they argue, she said, yes, but you, you need to have compassion also to, to stop that person from abusing you mm -hmm. because that person is also creating negative karma and so forth. That is a discussion, mm -hmm. but Lydia says that for me it's helpful to, to, mm -hmm. to remind myself that I have created this karma too. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, the biggest danger in all of this is the temptation of self-cherishing to think you're the only one that suffers, right, for anything that we're looking at, never mind what we're looking at. This is what self-cherishing does to us, is it says, I'm the only one who suffers. And then we don't see the other side and their context and the way that they struggle. And then it makes it into like a competition of who is the one that has been harmed the most and it prevents any kind of progress. You know, because, uh, you know, there's all these conversations, you see them online about uh, toxic masculinity and the harm on, you know, female society and not as many articles on how it's not really nice for men either, right? All of this pressure to somehow be strong and compassionate, to be bold and assertive but also listen, you know, and all of these things. It's got to be hard for guys as well. And there needs to be a space for them to say, I see your suffering, here is my suffering, you know, for, and for you to say, you know, for us to say as women, here is our suffering, tell me about your suffering, you know, and to really look at the basis of all of it is self-cherishing, and self-cherishing is what leads us to objectify in all ways, you know, to objectify the other gender is what I need for happiness or what is giving me suffering, both. You know, this is what we do, is we say, this thing, whatever I've decided, is the source of my happiness or the source of my suffering. You know, think about it with racism, right? Where um, if you had some bad experience or some upbringing that said people of this race are the ones that hurt you, then when you see them, you assume they are the harmful ones. Right? You get these associations in your mind because you've objectified someone on the basis of a characteristic. Yeah? And then you project that on all other people with that characteristic of that particular skin color, for example. And it's a big mistake. It's just a big projection. But there still might have been one situation with one individual with that color skin that was difficult, that needed to be addressed. But it didn't mean it had anything to do with their skin color. It was the behavior. You know, similarly with gender. Right? It's like you can have, you know, a bad boss who disrespected you and didn't give you a promotion, who happened to be a man, and now every time you have a male boss, you're assuming they'll treat you the same way. That's not fair to them, is it? And yet, maybe they will, because of socialization. You know, but to give people a chance to show you who they are before we project who we think they are, you know, give people a chance to show you. This is what we have to do, and self-cherishing really likes to cut corners and make shortcuts and then make everything about you. So if at least we can acknowledge that every single sentient being on earth is suffering, it's the first noble truth. Then when we talk about our suffering, it's with less of a kind of like, I'm the brave one dealing with difficulty, you know, or I'm the suffering one who is misunderstood. We make it less of an identity issue then it can just be a conversation about how do we all hurt each other less, you 
know, let's all just talk about how do we stop hurting each other and listen really deeply when people tell us things. And, you know, and when people are doing the wrong thing repeatedly, we need to hold them accountable because we love them and want to prevent them from creating negative karma. Because then it's going to come back around and hurt them, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's not against dharma to hold people accountable. We just need to try and do it without anger and without retaliation or punishment ideas. You know what I mean? And without universalizing a behavior and assuming it's everyone. You know, let people surprise you. Delicate balance. Yeah. Boys, what do you think? Que tenemos que ir juntos en este camino. We have to walk together in this way. Yeah. To walk together. She says that these principles that you mentioned, uh, uh, not punishing, not retaliation, and so forth should be, even at the beginning of creating an, an association, uh, independently of the aim of the association, even more important than the aim, because all these types of associations with an ideal, with a, with a core idea, mm -hmm. like feminism or whatever, due to the fact that our society works in this way, end up with this type of anger and so forth. So first work with these principles of exactly. love and so forth. And, yeah, and use, you know, and use structures that we're comfortable with in the West, like some aspects of modern psychology, like nonviolent communication, all these good structures to help us communicate this way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Sakyarita has works with empower women, but it's Buddhism, feminism and Buddhism. So we cannot um, miss one of the parts. So it's feminism and it's Buddhism. So you have to use the Buddhism to, to solve the situation, because it, uh, we are Buddhist, so we have Buddhism uh, tools. So. Yeah, yeah I mean, the tools are there. The tools are there, we just need to use them. Um, sometimes the way of speaking, those tools, you know, aren't explicitly spoken of in Buddhism. The way to think is spoken of in Buddhism. And the way to think is the most important thing. But there is an argument for trying to learn what are ways to use our voice that kind of reaches people rather than alienates people. You know, and what are, you know, without, tell, you know, without getting mental gymnastics or getting ourselves tied into knots, trying to say everything in a politically correct way, you know, because that also can be a problem. But just what are ways that um, open up conversations as opposed to close them? You know, and what are ways that make people feel safe to express their opinion, even if their opinion isn't fully formed or completely perfectly logical yet, just to be able to say, so far this is what I'm thinking about this. Let's see where it goes. So people don't then jump on them and say, no, 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 you have it wrong. Or, you know, to be able to, you know, really keep it safe and productive and, like, collaboration at the basis. Not like, here's the one who says it perfectly and will be the director of the conversation. But, you know, how do we collaborate together to make an atmosphere that feels really like a sangha, you know? Like real sangha. Community, like deep community. Hmm. Yeah. Because the, the Tantra system is actually very respectful of the dynamic of men and women together. And very um, powerful in how good a community can be when these two energies are in alignment and in balance, externally in the external community, and internally within one individual. Having masculine and feminine traits in balance within yourself, and in balance within a community. Um, this is one of the great benefits of a deep tantric practice is understanding these things. And so we can really use the fact that Tibetan Buddhism uses tantra very effectively, but actually even research it better because sometimes these um, ritual things aren't fully understood. And so then we miss the benefit. Yeah, we just kind of go through the motions because we're supposed to. 
but actually there's a very deep mind training at the basis of them, and a very deep practice at the basis of them, which can create really beautiful community harmony. So it's, it's worth kind of exploring all different ways of um, connecting, bonding, and enriching each other's practice, and know that a, you know, a unique feature of Tibetan Buddhism is how much we use Tantra within it. Even for people without empowerments, you know, there's sprinkles of Tantra all throughout these practices, and it can really help. Um, because sometimes we need to not be talking all the time. Sometimes we need to just practice together, you know, do chanting together and meditation together. Because this builds these really strong bonds, which then when we do have a conversation, we're less likely to offend each other. Because we know there's a basis of respect and affection. You know, so you can say the wrong thing, you can say things not perfectly, you can make a mistake, and people just forgive each other naturally because you're in this, you know, community atmosphere. And that's, you know, something that we really need to make effort to create. Um, safe space for us to just do the wrong thing and then help each other out of it and it not be a big deal either. Yeah. There is, there is always like, um, in the Buddhist community, there's always something like, um, more related to karma, this thing that sometimes is very difficult to express uh, because you think, well, uh, if this is happening to me, it's because of karma, and, and you don't, you cannot really express sometimes because you will be maybe talking bad about someone, mm. and in this case about male uh, positions, yeah. Um, but then th there is a gap there where you can, like for example, they always give you examples like, um, uh, I remember one one teacher or one uh, Rinpoche, I don't know, a, a, a yogi that uh, um, someone was accusing him of having a baby or something mm. like that with a woman and then he takes the baby and then he, he you know, he yeah. takes care of the baby and that, but I mean he never expresses that it is not true. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you do that in certain situations, you always think that the truth is not going to come out, and if you don't express things, uh, the truth is not going to come out by itself. So where is the gap, where is the wisdom to know really uh, when is the time to talk, how can you talk, because if you don't have the wisdom or, or, or or find the special you know, communication yeah. skills to, to express that, uh, you end up sometimes just, you know, being quiet because you know you you tell yourself, oh yeah, this is what you have, what I have to do because you know, I, I have to, you know, you know, just it's yeah. my karma. And yeah, you yeah. end up saying like that. It's my karma. That's it. And how? I mean, yeah, yeah. How do you find the balance between these two? It's very difficult. And uh, to not um, mind train yourself into paralysis. Right, to not uh, get your meditation practice so perfectly organized that you're never able to move or speak because you've made some internal peace with something that does need to be externally addressed. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, you know, I'll let you know when I figure it out. Um, but uh, I guess we have to keep coming back to always what is my motivation, you know, and uh, a lot of us have known unfortunate stories about llamas for many years before they became public. And then you think, oh, should I have made more noise about it? Should I have told more people about it? Why didn't I? You know, and uh, what was the responsibility I had as an individual? And then you go back to, okay, what was my motivation at the time? Was it fear? Was it trying to maintain community harmony? Was it wanting to give someone a second chance? You know, and only you know that. Right? Like, you have to be your own witness. And also be honest enough to know, oh, sometimes I was a coward. This time I'll try to be different. Or, actually, I wasn't a coward. I knew the volatility of the situation. I knew it could have really exploded and caused a lot of harm, and so I waited until it was the right time to speak. But I think the core of all of it is to be brave enough to do the wrong thing. Yeah, to like, you get your motivation as good as you possibly can, and you really get as calm as you possibly can, and then you act as wisely as you can, and might fail anyway. 
but to be brave enough to go, okay, well, if I have those components in place, it's worth giving it a try. Otherwise, lots of things won't ever change. You know, and lots of these situations with abusive llamas were quite widely known before they exploded into the public view. And some of the reasons for covering stuff up was absolutely outrageous, unacceptable, it should never happen again. And some of it was practical, kind, compassionate humans saying, okay, maybe that was just one mistake, let's give someone a second chance, you know? So it's also, you have to have the wisdom of the ways of the world, right, and not turn into the Catholic Church and know that when people do a certain kind of sexual misconduct, it's often repeated. How could this llama with this title do something like this again and again and again and feel like it's okay? This really shocks us, doesn't it, when we hear these stories. So, it also takes the wisdom to understand the cultural context as well as the psychology of certain bad behaviors, to know what is the sort of behavior you need to just jump on immediately as soon as you see it, and what are the kind of behaviors to be a bit more um, flexible about and give people a second chance about. You know, it takes worldly wisdom as well as Dharma wisdom. It's hard, so you know, there's no quick answer to this. You just have to really sit with, given what I know so far, here is the truth. Working with my mind the best as I can, this is calm as it gets. Now, bodhicitta, bodhicitta, does it still feel like I should say something? And then speak bravely, directly, let people argue with you, let people misunderstand you. But if you feel that kind of um, foundation first, it's not going to hurt your mind so much when people argue. But you have to expect to be misunderstood. You know, you have to go into a bold move, expecting to be misunderstood and expecting people to call you crazy or to call you overreacting or to minimize what you've done. You have to expect that kind of reaction before you start. And then it's a bonus if people believe you and follow what you're saying. But, you know, you have to kind of prepare yourself mentally because, you know, people don't have your same history. They don't have your same context, so they might not come to the same conclusions. But if you're calm and you speak to their heart, they might change their mind eventually. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to acknowledge that no matter how evolved or a lama is, but the mere fact of being born in samsara here, he might be affected by the environment, by the disturbing emotions and, and so forth. So while you have a body in samsara, you will be affected by this. Yeah, I mean, remember that samsara is always your own five aggregates. But it also could be that um, a being might be a perfect being, but our karmic obscurations are such that all we can see is fault. Like uh, the Buddha's cousin Devadatta thought that the Buddha was evil and always tried to kill him. But the Buddha was perfect. But Devadatta didn't have the karma to see that. You know, theoretically, he might have actually been a Buddha also, just demonstrating this good story. But that's not to say that um, we can't just recognize faults as faults in terms of behavior. So it becomes very delicate with um, guru devotion and guru yoga because we have no idea who this being really is and we have no idea what our projections are and we don't know how much of this is reality what we're seeing even conventional reality we don't know but we can say i don't know who this being is but this and this and this behavior are unethical so if it is a holy being they can cope with me confronting them yeah, because they might even be displaying this appearance in order for us to confront them, in order for new policies to be made to protect others in the future. And we have to hold this possibility. You know, it can feel like some sort of um, mental dance to try and justify something that's just wrong. Right? And we can get cynical and think, oh, it's a tale as old as time. Yeah, men abusing power and authority, what's new? Right? But it could be that this is a holy being showing a negative aspect so that new laws or new policies are put into place. 
But we have to assume if they are a holy being doing a wrong thing, that they're doing that on purpose and know what the ramifications are going to be. They know what's going to happen if they keep doing things like this and they're doing it anyway. So they must know they're eventually going to be arrested and eventually big conversations will happen and eventually we need new policies that are more strict. Otherwise they would have shown a different appearance. So we have to assume that as well. And personally, this is the approach I think we should take in our own organization with the misbehaviors we're seeing recently, is to say, whoever this being is, these particular behaviors are not behaviors that are in accordance with the laws of the land, they're not in accordance with the Vinaya, they're not in accordance with the teachings on preventing sexual misconduct, therefore we need to explicitly say these behaviors need to be challenged and stopped. And if they're not, we need to stop listening to this person showing this aspect. And all of that could be the perfect display of the Dharmakaya. And yet still needs to be said. So this also can prevent the mind from getting angry about the whole thing. They could think, ah, oh, okay, it just must be the time for this conversation. Thank you for being so horrible. Because now we're talking about it. And there's a, in the Vinaya, the monastic discipline, <clears throat> there's a lot of stories behind vows that were given, where um, a certain monk or a nun uh, did something very crazy, and then the Buddha said, okay, everyone, now that this has happened, I have to say, don't do that. And then it turns out later that maybe those like badly behaved monks and nuns were actually bodhisattvas doing these crazy things so that a certain vow would be placed for future generations. So it was a, a clever plan. <laughs> or it could just be humans are humans from beginningless time. <laughs> and afflictions are afflictions, and bad behavior is bad behavior, and we don't need to overthink it. Call a spade a spade. So, you know, whatever suits your mind, at least start with not being angry. Yeah. But if someone is already your teacher, there is a little bit more of a delicate dance you need to do internally to make sure your mind doesn't go down the wrong road. But if someone isn't technically your teacher, you know, have your opinions, just have them free from anger. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so how is it going with you guys thinking about this whole guru situation? Are you? Does it disturb your mind? Does it intrigue your mind? Os habéis planteado esto del maestro. Es algo que os preocupa. Os habéis preguntado cómo sería una relación con un maestro de este tipo. Tenéis, no sé, intriga, yo qué sé. Curiosidad. Curiosity. Es fácil encontrar. It's easy to find a teacher, but it's difficult to find a good teacher. <laughs> and uh, it could be that we have good three principal aspects of the path and we're ready for the next step and then we're looking for a teacher and it's hard to find. Puede ser que hayamos completado, o por lo menos eh, tengamos eh, muy claro los tres primeros aspectos de, principales del camino y estemos buscando al maestro, ¿no? Y, y no lo encontremos, nos cueste, ¿no? So then we just use the teachings as our teacher. Entonces lo que hacemos es utilizar las enseñanzas como nuestro maestro. There's a, a very famous prayer that we say called calling the guru from afar. Hay una oración eh, muy conocida que hacemos nosotros que se llama llamando al guru desde la distancia. And one of the last verses, I think, is very powerful. Y uno de los últimos versos yo creo que es muy poderoso. Which is, please bless me to meet the ultimate definitive Lama. Que eh, dice, por favor, bendíceme para poder encontrar al Lama último y definitivo. The bare face of my innate mind. La, el, el aspecto, mero aspecto del desnudo de mi propia mente. So, the inner guru your own wisdom needs to collaborate with the outer guru, whatever person it is you choose to fill this role. El, el guru interno necesita la colaboración del guru externo. And so when you find kind of the one, <laughs> cuando encuentras a ese guru, um, there's something about them that is like familiar. 
suele ocurrir que uno siente que esa persona es como muy familiar para ti. Like they think a little bit in a similar way to you, but an evolved form. Que parece que piensa como tú, de una manera evolucionada. Um, I can always tell students of the same teacher because there's something similar about them. Y por ejemplo, los estudiantes del mismo maestro, todos tienen cosas parecidas. They can be all different ethnicities and ages and genders, but there's something Pueden about their characters. Pueden ser de muchísimos países diferentes y de géneros y tal, pero parece que todos tienen alguna cosita, ¿no? Que comparten, ¿no? <laughs> uh, many students of my teacher are particularly argumentative. And uh, like to play and use sarcasm in a playful way. And then you can meet my teacher and he is like this, but in a perfectly compassionate, integrated way. Podéis luego ver a mi maestro que es así, lo que pasa que es así de un modo completamente perfecto e integrando todo, ¿no? And his arguments lead to people's wisdom awakening. Y sus discusiones eh, llevan a, a despertar a las personas, ¿no? And uh, his sarcasm and his teasing makes people laugh at themselves. Y sus bromas y su sarcasmo hace que las personas se rían de sí mismas. That really deep laugh of self-awareness, where you see that you've been absurd. Como una conciencia muy profunda de reírte de ti porque has visto que otros te han visto de verdad, ¿no? And it can like help you let go of silly habits you don't need anymore. Y eso ayuda mucho a, a decir adiós a muchos hábitos tontos que ya no necesitamos. So we all have these characteristics, but not in their like perfected form. O sea, que todos los estudiantes tenemos las mismas características, pero no de una manera perfeccionada como el maestro. But there's something similar about us. Pero hay algo que se comparte, ¿no?, entre los estudiantes. So, you know, where you're, when you're looking for a teacher, I think just keep it really open. Cuando buscas al maestro, intentar tener una mente muy abierta, ¿no? And just kind of check people out without any pressure in your mind. Y investigar a los maestros que vais conociendo sin ninguna expectativa, Because con una mente escéptica. The Dharmakaya mind of all the Buddhas pervades every atom of existence. Porque el, el Dharmakaya de todos los Budas impregna cada átomo de la existencia. The enlightened mind is always with you. La mente iluminada está siempre contigo. Maybe you could explain what Dharmakaya is, because I think uh, Nobody, not everybody will understand well. The mind of all the Buddhas. El Dharmakaya es la mente de todos los Budas. Which then uh, can take form as the emanation body or the enjoyment body. Que toma formas como cuerpos de emanación o como cuerpos del disfrute que se llaman. They take a form that's going to suit your mind and enable your transformation. Es la capacidad que tienen los Budas de tomar aspectos que son ideales porque se adaptan completamente a tu tipo de mente y son capaces de ayudarte y de llevarte a la iluminación. And so when we do prayers in Buddhism, we're really just talking to ourselves. Y cuando hacemos oraciones en el budismo, realmente estamos hablando solos con nosotros mismos. We're saying, open up, open up. Nos estamos diciendo, ábrete, ábrete. To all of the help and support and compassion that's always flooding into us. Sorry. We're trying to open up to all of the love and compassion Así, and support that's always being flooded into us. Estamos abriendo nuestro corazón para que todo el amor y la compasión y el apoyo nos venga, ¿no? We are, we are so held, we are so loved. Y en, en, ese, en ese sentido estamos tan, tan apoyados, tan queridos, somos tan queridos. But, but we don't feel it. Pero no lo sentimos. Because we're uh, closing ourselves in a prison of ego. Porque estamos encerrados en una prisión del ego. So anything that you can do to work on bodhicitta and emptiness and renunciation frees you up to experience that. Entonces cualquier cosa que puedes hacer eh, trabajando con la renuncia, con la bodhicitta y con la vacuidad va a servir para que os liberéis, ¿no? Para que os abráis el corazón. And then this uh, wisdom body or dharmakaya can then take the nirmanakaya form of many different things. Entonces el cuerpo de sabiduría del Buda lo que hace es que toma una forma de emanación para justamente poder trabajar con el tipo de personas, ¿no? con un tipo de personas en concreto. ¿no? Toma el aspecto idóneo para esas personas. The Buddhists could take the form of your dog. Pueden tomar el aspecto de un perro. Which, uh, de tu perro. 
which does cute, absurd things at just the right time to shift you out of your depression. Que hace cosas tontísimas en los momentos adecuados para subirte la moral cuando estás deprimido, por ejemplo, ¿no? El perrito, ¿no? So the guru is a useful tool, but the Buddha is manifesting all the time as many different things. El guru es algo muy necesario, muy sí para la práctica, pero el Buda está manifestándose constantemente todo el tiempo de modos muy diversos. And so, you know, when you're sort of approaching a teacher, um, you know, a sutra level teacher can be very powerful. Y cuando estáis buscando un maestro, un maestro eh, de sutra, por ejemplo, puede ser muy poderoso. And you can be really listening to everything they say as personal advice specifically for you. Y, y puedes ser capaz de escuchar cada consejo que te da, cada cosa que dice como un consejo personal para ti. And then even in a big general teaching, you'll start to hear things that are perfect for your life right now. Si tomas esa actitud con ese maestro, aunque estéis en una clase de mucha gente, eh, estás oyendo algo que personalmente para ti es muy importante y de mucha utilidad. Because you've created that openness. ¿Por qué? Porque has, cre has, ab has abierto, ¿no? Has creado esa apertura en ti. But if you think of the teachings of, oh, this is just general knowledge for whoever. Pero si crees que las enseñanzas son conocimientos generales para todo el mundo, then it is just general knowledge for pues whoever. Resulta que, que, no, que no es más que eso para ti también. ¿no? And it doesn't touch your heart or transform your mind. Y no te toca el corazón ni es capaz de transformar tu mente. Because you're sort of saying this doesn't apply to me. This is just interesting philosophy. Porque tú ya vienes con este con esta idea de que eso no lo puedes aplicar a ti, que son simplemente conocimientos generales y que son interesantes. And in my own experience, I finally met a teacher after I had been listening to general teachings as personal advice. The same person? The same person? No. Ah, no. Entonces yo, eh, mi experiencia es que eh, he encontrado a, al maestro después de escuchar durante tiempo eh, enseñanzas generales intentando escucharlas como consejos personales para mí. I was going to lots of different teachings all over the place. Estaba yendo a muchísimos sitios a diferentes enseñanzas. And at some point, I decided I need to take this personally. Y un momento dado yo dije, tengo que tomar esto que estoy escuchando de manera personal. I need to stop leaving these ideas in the abstract. I need to actually practice them. Dejar de jugar con estas ideas de manera abstracta y aplicarlas a mi propia vida. And as I started to do that, it built a momentum in my practice. Y cuando empecé a hacer eso, eso fue un antes y un después en mi práctica. Fue un cambio increíble. ¿no? Which led me to a big Dharma center that had a big qualified teacher who totally changed my life. Que me llevó a un centro de Dharma muy grande, que tenía un maestro muy calificado y que conocerlo cambió mi vida. But it's not like he was sitting up here on this high throne thinking, I shall change your life. Pero no es porque el maestro estuviera ahí sentado en el trono diciendo, voy a cambiar la vida. I was in the mood to have my life changed. Sino que yo tenía el ánimo de que mi vida fuera transformada, ¿no? I changed my life. Yo fui quien cambié mi vida. ¿no? He was just the catalyst. El era el catalizador. So we have to remember that we're in charge of our own path. Entonces tenemos que recordar siempre que nosotros somos los responsables y los que estamos a cargo de nuestro propio camino. And when you find someone who suits your mind, you just listen to them as best as you can. Y cuando encontráis a alguien que, que se adapta a vuestro modo de pensar eh, o vuestro modo de ser, simplemente eh, you listen to them as best as you can. Intentar escuchar a esa persona lo mejor que podéis. Again and again and again. Una y otra vez. And then when you hear other teachers, when you hear other teachers, cuando escucháis otros maestros, then you try and hear them as if they're your primary teacher. Intenta escucharles como si fuera tu primer maestro, ¿no? Eh, so then even if your teacher dies, you can kind of hear echoes of them through other teachers. Aunque tu maestro haya muerto, puedes escuchar ecos de tu maestro en otros maestros. We have to assume that the Buddhas want the best for us at all times. Tenemos que asumir que los Budas quieren lo mejor para nosotros en todo momento. That's their job. Ese es su, su trabajo. So they're going to try and get to us however. O sea que siempre van a intentar llegar a nosotros del modo que sea. We just have to choose a model of manufacturing an openness and keeping an openness. Lo único que nosotros tenemos que tener, encontrar un modo de abrirnos, de manufacture, yeah. Yeah. Uh, create. de crear una apertura en nosotros, ¿no? y de dejarlo como patrón de nuestra conducta, una apertura grande. But then not fall into the trap of thinking the structure is the openness. 
ya, pero no caer en la, en, en, la, en, la, en la trampa de pensar que esa actitud es la apertura o ese patrón, ¿entiende? No, no. So something like Tantra is a tool that works to get your mind and heart open. Por ejemplo, el, el Tantra es un instrumento que sirve para abrir tu mente y tu corazón. But if you start thinking it exists that way from its own side, again, you've disempowered yourself. Pero si piensas que el Tantra existe así por su propio lado, entonces tú te estás arrebatando tu propio poder. You think, oh, this Tantra is transforming my mind. It's so amazing, this Tantra. Y dices, este Tantra es increíble, está transformando mi mente. Say, no, you are transforming your mind. You're amazing. No es así, eres tú el que estás transformando tu mente. And this is a really good tool. Y es un instrumento muy bueno. It's like if you find a diet that works, you're the one that's healthy at the end. Es como si encuentras una dieta que que funciona para ti, tú eres al final el que el que está saludable, ¿no? And now it's your health. Y es tu salud al final, al final, ¿no? Your health isn't owned by whoever created the diet. Y tu salud no está no es es la creación de aquel que escribió esa esa dieta o que creó esa dieta. It's that your body always had the potential for health, and then you met a structure that worked for your body sino que tu cuerpo siempre tenía el potencial de la salud y creaste un medio para recuperar la salud. ¿no? And part of you knows lots of other ones would have worked too. Lots of other diets would have worked for your body becoming healthy too. Y cualquier otra, muchas otras dietas servirían también para que recuperaras la salud. But if you just know that and never try any of them, you never get healthy. Pero si solo las conoces y nunca las intentas hacer, nunca estarás bien. Yeah, and so we have to treat the Dharma the same way. We have to jump in and try something, see if it works. Tenemos que ver el Dharma igual. Tenemos que intentar y ponernos en la labor y ver si funciona en nosotros o no. Without getting lost in form and think it's the only thing that works. Sin perdernos en las formas, pensando que es lo único que funciona. We don't want to become fundamentalists. Porque no queremos convertirnos en fundamentalistas. We don't want to look down on other structures that also help people transform their minds. Ni tampoco queremos despreciar o considerar inferiores otras disciplinas que funcionan para otros. We don't want to ever say Buddhism is the best. Ni siquiera decir nunca que el budismo es lo es lo mejor. Just say it's the best for me. Sino que dices lo mejor para mí. If it is. Sí, es lo mejor para ti, claro. It might be that Christianity is the best for you, and then you use some aspects of Buddhism to make you a better Christian. Puede ser que para ti lo mejor sea la la religión cristiana y para ti es lo mejor y utilizas algunos aspectos del budismo y para aplicarlo a a la a la religión cristiana, por ejemplo. It's your life you get to decide. Eres tú quien decide porque es tu vida, ¿no? So the danger with the guru disciple relationship is that you sort of give up all responsibility and accountability for your own life to this external figure. El peligro que tiene la relación con el guru es que renuncias totalmente a tu responsabilidad y al control de ti mismo y se lo pones en manos de esa persona. Some people even become so uh, indoctrinated in this worldview that they'll ask the guru, "Oh, should I marry this person or not?" Y hay mucha gente que, que toma esta visión y cree totalmente en ella como su doctrina y hasta llega incluso a preguntar al maestro si se tiene que casar con una persona, por ejemplo, ¿no? Should I take this job or not? Should I do this holiday or not? O me tengo que ir a, eh, puedo, es bueno que coja este trabajo o es bueno que me vaya de vacaciones. It's your life, you do what you want. Es, es tu vida, eh, haz lo que quieras, ¿no? Learn the teachings well and then your choices will be good. Si aprendes bien las enseñanzas, tus opciones serán buenas siempre. So a guru disciple relationship isn't giving up self determination. Entonces la relación guru discípulo no es abandonar tu propia determinación. And if you get too far into that, it becomes a cult. Porque si te si lo haces y vas demasiado lejos, eso se convierte en un en un culto por alguien, ¿no? So we have to be really careful that we don't distort the dharma in this way. Entonces tenemos que tener mucho cuidado de no distorsionar el dharma de, de este modo. Objections or insights? Objections or algo que 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 insights? 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 Things you want to share? Algo que quieras compartir? Bueno, yo quería decir que a mí todo lo que se ha estado hablando un poco de la liberación y de la vacuidad me me ha me ha hecho eh, pensar en la ataraxia 
Entonces, no sé si está muy relacionado con ello o es prácticamente, o es sinónimo, o sí que hay diferencias con la ataraxia. Ataraxia, you know what is ataraxia? In English, ataraxia. Interaction? No, ataraxia. Es ataraxia que... es, eh, bueno, fue, es, digamos, una corriente de filosófica eh, de los griegos en el que se trataba precisamente de desligarte de, 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 todo, de todo sufrimiento y precisamente un poco no estar apegado a todas las cosas materiales o sensoriales y, y entonces eso es un poco lo que me, me ha hecho un poco la vacuidad rico. también, te has dicho sí, ¿no? la vacuidad, eh, no recuerdo que estuviera ah, esa palabra pero bueno, de alguna forma era precisamente eso desde de, el desapego ese hacia las cosas yeah, it seems that there was a Greek philosophy, philosophy called ataraxia mm -hmm. in, the Greek, in the Greek philosophical times And the, this philosophy says that you have to get detached from objects because they are the cause of your suffering. And she was thinking on, on that, mm -hmm. relating to your teachings. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels with Greek philosophy, for sure. Hay muchos paralelos con la filosofía de los griegos en el Dharma. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And a lot of similarities with the Greek debate style and the Tibetan Buddhist um, debate so, style. So, el modo que debatían los griegos es muy similar a como debaten en el budismo tibetano. Y me ha recordado bastante. Y, y quería decir que me ha sorprendido muy agradablemente esto último que estaba diciendo ella. Al hacer el símil con, con lo de las dietas, ¿no? que eh, una dieta te puede hacer bien, pero también podrías haber intentado otra, e igualmente podrías haber obtenido el mismo beneficio. Y entonces mmm, me ha gustado mucho que ella dijera que el budismo también, o sea, no puede ser o, o, no, o no intenta ser mejor que otras disciplinas yeah. o otras, no sé si llamarlo religiones yeah. sino que muchas eh, de ellas te pueden, eh, te pueden servir igual o que incluso puedes eh, adaptar, adaptar para cosas del budismo por ejemplo al cristianismo que digamos es el que más conocemos She was very positively surprised when you said that that about diets, no? Mm. That you might get very good with the diet, but any other one may may would have served the mm. same. And also when you said that the Buddhism is not, you cannot say that it's the best. It depends on the person. Mm. And also when you said that you can adapt your own beliefs to the to, mm. the, to the Buddhism teachings and get something useful mm. for you. She's very well impressed. No, very happy what you said. <laughs> good. Tell everyone. <laughs> okay. Tell everyone what. That. <laughs> they know because they, she said in Spanish. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm saying everyone here should tell people that about Buddhism. Ah, que todos yeah. esto lo tenéis que decir porque hay una idea de budismo, ¿no? Y esto mismo que estamos hablando es importante, que es una religión, pero que es muy respeta a todas las demás, ¿no? Y, y que incluso se pueden tomar eh, partes de ellas si os son útiles, ¿no? It's not just my opinion. It's a Buddhist belief. Esa es una cosa que no es solo que yo opino, sino que es lo que se cree en el budismo, ¿no? We even have uh, bodhisattva vows about not disparaging other traditions. Hay un voto del bodhisattva que consiste en no, de, en no hablar mal ni despreciar otras religiones, eh, respetarlas, ¿no? So, uh, finish? Acabamos. So, um, uh, dedicate all the positive mental energy you put into listening and thinking. Vamos a dedicar toda la energía mental que hemos puesto en el escuchar y en el pensar. And think that it all goes towards the development of your fullest potential. Y pensar que toda esa energía va, eh, se dedica para el desarrollo de todo y vuestro potencial, ¿no? In particular, your potential for renunciation, bodhicitta, and correct view. In particular, vuestro potencial para la bodhicitta, la la renuncia y la visión correcta. Gone gone to Pelwasho. Kari rawe go we shinkam dear. Pendang de wa malusion way. Chepes you want him sing at soli. Shapes he te badu ten you. Gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.